and welcome back. Uh, going to be a little bit different of a video uh, today. Um, as you well know, in the previous video, we had our first startup um, of our upgraded 6.4, uh, which was a success. Um, currently still not seen any leaks. It's been still sitting here in the garage and, and powered down and allowed to cool down and not seen any drips on, on the cardboard or anything underneath, so that's good. But uh, we're going to do an upgrade today, but not to the 6.4 liter engine itself which is why this will be in a separate playlist i'm still thinking of names for it but uh, as we covered before three years ago we put the supercharger on it and obviously recently we've done the cam swap and the tune adjustments and the other upgrades now we have to kind of start looking at making sure that the items attached to the engine, aka the drivetrain, transmission, transfer case, rear diff, front diff, uh, consists of four-wheel drive, uh, can handle the increased output of this motor. Because you remember it was spec from the factory to be a certain amount. We added the supercharger, that added an amount. We do the cam swaps and the tune adjustments and everything we do to it, in which we're increasing the original amount of horsepower uh, when it came from the factory. We just got to make sure that everything also connected into the drivetrain can handle that. Now, ultimately, uh, the goal is, is to get this truck down to a fellow YouTuber shop called Precision Transmission. And it's going to be a little bit of a jaunt to get it down there. Either we're going to have to drive the truck there or we're going to have to have a uh, transportation company come pick it up and get it down there for us because where I'm located versus where they're located, uh, it's going to be a pretty substantial drive. But I would really love uh, for them to get a hold of this and work their magic on the transmission and the transfer case. Uh, the link to their channel will be in the description. I highly suggest you track them out. If you want to see a group of individuals, very highly skilled, very knowledgeable in their trade and what they do, and makes looking, tearing apart and rebuilding transmissions for performance needs or even just normal needs, makes it just look effortlessly and like a hot knife through butter that's the channel you want to check out. It's the really reason why I really want to get this uh, get this truck down to them and let them work their magic on the transmission. But before we do that, a uh, little bit of a compromise. We are going to do an upgrade on the transmission today. We're going to do a fluid flush, but we are not going to put the factory pan back on. What you see here is a company called Mag High Tech. They make transmission pan replacements and differential cover replacements and this is the pan that we have chosen for this application uh, they do have a slightly deeper pan than this that would fit for our dodge transmission but if you remember underneath there is a crossover of the driver's side exhaust where it crosses over the bottom of the transmission pan hooks into the rest of the y pipe because of that we have to go with a pan that can accommodate that so this pan as you can see here is aircraft grade aluminum it is much 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 thicker than a factory pan because uh, it's going to help the transmission dissipate heat through the pan and you can see all the fin work underneath there and the fin work goes in direction of the airflow and the pan actually fits on this way with this uh, flatter part towards the back. So you're going to have air coming across the front of these fins on through. So this will help cool things. It also adds an extra quart and a half capacity to the factory pan. So when we refill, I'm going to measure how much comes out of the, uh, out of the uh, drip pan put that much back in plus an extra quart and a half to accommodate for the extra depth of this pan. This kit comes with the pan as you can see here. The, a new filter and this is the four-wheel drive filter which should look exactly like the one that's in it since we have a four-wheel drive but in order to use this deeper pan if you had a two-wheel drive application you still have to use the 4x4 four four filter because you need the extra depth in that filter in order to uh, maintain proper fluid operation of the transmission. Uh, it comes with new hardware, 
new Allen, Allen hardware, as you can see there. Uh, so we'll not only will we not be reusing the factory pan, but we're obviously going to ditch the factory hardware, mounting hardware while we're at it. And the other nice thing I really love about their pans, not only are they heavy duty and again, add to cooling, give you more fluid capacity, but you can see there, you got a drain plug, which is phenomenal. Makes it phenomenally easier going forward when we have to change fluid in this again. So we're doing this as a preventative measure to help uh, with the excess wear and tear that the transmission is now going to receive with the because of the extra power that we can now generate out of the engine itself. Again, the long-term goal is to get the truck itself down to precision transmission and let them work over the transfer case and the transmission, let them redo the internals so the internals are more robust and can kind of handle better what we're throwing at it. Again, their channel is much, much, much more, uh, much bigger than mine. Uh, I doubt they probably even know of my channel, but that doesn't mean that uh, I still don't want to take my vehicle down there and have them service it, because I do. It's just going to be a matter of how we get it down there. Again, we either drive it down there, which is going to be a significant road trip, uh, or we hire a transportation company to hire it down there, let them do their work and bring it back. And that may be a little bit more on the expensive end, but we'll have to look into it. But for now, what we're going to do is that we're going to drop the uh, factory pan, drain of its fluid, clean up our mating surface because they also give you a fiber gasket. The factory pan is held on by just an RTV seal. And you're going to see underneath, when we get underneath there, that the, real, the other reason why we're also doing this is that we're starting to get seepage. So this is the 2016, and when I'm starting to get seepage on this end of the transmission and this end of the transmission, uh, because it's just time that RTV is just starting to seep. The nice thing about this, and you'll see here that they do give it to you and they let you know that this is not a cork gasket this is a fiber gasket this is what they suggest that you use because the transmission uh, mounting surface is aluminum this pan is aluminum and per their instructions they have found that aluminum to aluminum uh, they ha weren't getting or don't get good enough seals with cork so they give you a fiber one and inside the transmission to my understanding along with this transmission filter is a spin-on type transmission filter, and we'll look into this when we change it. And from the instructions I've seen, now they don't give you this in the kit. I, I had to go out and get this separately. But looking at the all data instructions on the return line from the transmission cooler, if I remember correctly, is where they have this filter plumbed into. So you have actually got dual filters inside this transmission. Uh, again, plus we're going to go ahead and get this pan on there. So once we're done, we're going to have a system which we should be able to dissipate heat uh, more efficiently as well as have some extra fluid capacity in the transmission itself. You know, plus get rid of the one that, get rid of the, get, get, take the one off there that's basically starting to leak. So let me go ahead and pause you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all this stuff underneath the vehicle and just kind of get it prepped. And I'll show you the current factory pan that's there and show you kind of where we're getting that seepage to come in. One moment. And welcome back. So as promised, this is the current factory pan, which you've probably seen in some of the other videos when we were doing the six point updates to the motor itself. Uh, but you can see here, get some better light on the subject here. Uh, you can see that we're getting some seepage around this corner. You know, and I'd noticed this about a year or so ago, and I did go through and try to tighten these bolts up a little bit, but, uh, I mean, it helped, but it obviously uh, didn't stop it. And more across the front, you can kind of see that corner seeping really good there, and kind of also in that corner as well. So what we're going to work on first is just... Uh, Getting these bolts out of this pan, as we were talking about earlier, you can see this spooge of RTV just kind of sticking out of the edges here because that's how it comes from the factory. And a matter of fact, even according to the service manual, 
if you were to drop this just to change the filter and you're going to keep the factory pan, they just tell you to clean up the RTV uh, off the mating surfaces and put another bead on it, which obviously we'll be changing that going forward because it's going to have a an actual gasket on it. And what I'm going to do is just like we did when we took the oil pan off, in order to separate this uh, because of the, all this RTV in order to break it apart, just so that I don't damage the mating surface on the transmission itself, I'm just going to use another one of these plastic trim removal tools and kind of work it into the between the edge of the current pan and the transmission itself until we can kind of get it broken free. But uh, what I'm going to use is the catch pan to show it to you down there. If you remember our big, uh, large concrete mixing tubs is what they are. You can get them at uh, you know, pretty much Lowe's, Home Depot, any, any um, uh, hardware parts store. Uh, and they come in quite handy for even doing stuff like this. So since we're dealing with a pretty pretty good sized rectangular surface here um, we can slide that in nice big mixing tub completely underneath here and as we crack this loose be able to use that nice big surface of that mixing tub just like we did when we were using it to catch the coolant when we took the cylinder heads off we can kind of use it here to help catch the uh, the fluid as it starts to drip and run out uh, without making all over the floor so I'm going to go ahead and get started on that and then uh, when we get the bolts out and uh, I'll probably go ahead and pull this pan down before I bring you back but I'll, I'll show you the internals once we uh, once we get to that point of changing out these filters uh, but uh, I'll bring you back in a bit thank you much Bye. and welcome back so in case you're doing this job that uh, the amount of RTV, at least in my case, the amount they put on there to seal that, it was pretty frozen on there even after taking all 16, 15 bolts out. But you can see our trim removal tool, I was able to kind of tap it in place on that corner there, which is on the driver's side here, and was finally able to get that pan to crack loose. And you can see we're starting to drain our coolant into our pan. Yes, and in case you're wondering, uh, in order to get the angle on it to tap that in place, that had to be underneath of it. Yes, and as you can probably imagine, it started to crack loose as I was laying directly underneath of it. So I'm also wearing some of this uh, transmission fluid. So, <laughs> you know, keep that in mind. You know, I guess if you want to make sure that pan comes off easily, make sure you are laying underneath of it that way. Or if he's law can kick in and... You know, make sure that you also get a, a liberal coating of transmission fluid uh, along with everything else. But uh, so you can kind of see there again, just using a plastic trim removal tool so I don't scratch up and damage that surface. But uh, I'll let this kind of drip a bit more and then we'll go through using that same uh, plastic tool there and just kind of work our way around it until we can get that pan uh, crack loose enough uh, to remove it. But I'll bring you back when it's done. Thank you much. And welcome back. So I just want to show you the shot of it of the underside. When we just took the pan off. I'm just going to let things just continue to kind of drip here. Uh, but that's going to be the, you see the uh, uh, pickup filter there. And that does match the one they sent us. Uh, in the kit, so we'll go ahead and look at, it looks like it's being held on by a single Torx fastener on that end here, on the flat part of where that tab's at, and then you can see our spin-on filter there that's in the opposite corner, so we'll look and see what we need to get that changed out. So like I said, we're just going to let that continue to drip. The nice thing is, is that all of that RTV gunk they had uh, piled onto that pan to make that seal uh, looks to have gotten, none of it actually stuck to the actual transmission itself. So once that seal was cracked loose, it didn't take much to, to finish pulling that pan down. All of the RTV, and I'll show it to you here, uh, stuck to the factory pan. You can see that here. You know, the fluid's still in nice, good, nice, good reddish, you know, reddish, pinkish color. Uh, not too bad for it being three-year-old fluid. I mean, uh, yeah, we, we are doing this uh, this fluid change a bit earlier than, than the scheduled interval. But uh, you can see our magnet down here 
the only debris we have in our magnet is very, very, very light, you know, and that would be perfectly normal, you know, as those clutch packs and stuff, you know, wear in and, you know, just in general use. I guess my point is you don't see any excessive material or other deposits inside this pan. So this, this transmission and its fluid, at least at this point in time, is in fairly decent shape. But I'm gonna work on getting uh, getting this old filter out and getting that replaced and take a look at that spin-on filter. And then I'll, I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So as you can see there, uh, we've got our uh, pump filter or a pickup filter or a pump filter removed that uh, mounts that body and uh, that was a uh, let's see here let's see if I can get the number off of that no, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pull that closer to get you the size of that hold on one second that was a T25 uh, Torx bit that holds the back of that uh, bigger filter on We've also got our screw-on filter, which is pretty much, you know, screws on and off just like a standard oil filter would be. The torque spec for that back mounting bolt for that filter is 40 inch-pounds per the manual, and it says to tighten the new uh, spin-on filter to 80 inch-pounds. Now, I understand it got heat cycled and everything, just like pretty much an engine oil filter does, but I, I will tell you, it took... <laughs> It took more than 80 inch pounds of force to, to get that old oil filter to break its seal and finally spin off. But as you can see there, it's just uh, continuing the drip because uh, that is in line with the lines that go out to the transmission cooler and come back again. So I'm gonna go ahead and let those continue to drip. Uh, once that's complete, uh, we'll get the new filters put back on and start putting our pan back in place. Now. Maybe you can see that up in there, but you can see that circular seal. Um, let me get a flashlight in here and actually point towards it. That seal right there at the end of the flashlight that goes uh, into the pump that the bigger valve body filter or the pump filter fits into. Uh, it says that can be reused. This is just to make sure that it's not damaged, which it's not, and to make sure that that seal is sitting flush with the pump body, which it is. It, it didn't pull out any when we pulled the seal out. And considering the condition of everything in here, it looking as good as it does and nice clean fluid, I'm not gonna pull that pump seal out and replace it because per the manual, it says if it looks in good condition and it's still flush with the pump body, which ours is, I'm gonna, it, it's safe to reuse it. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse it and just go ahead and put the new filter into there. Uh, but like I said, we're going to go ahead and let this just continue to uh, to drip until it stops. And then uh, we'll come out here and get our filters uh, put back in and start uh, prepping to get our pan put back in place. And uh, I'll bring it back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So you can see that we've got our pump filter reinstalled with our torque screw reattached. And then our spin-on filter. So for the spin-on filter, you may not be able to see it, but I just treated it like you would a standard oil filter. Put some ATV, took some of the ATV fluid that was dripping, uh, ran over the uh, seal on it, the rubber seal that was on it, spin it in place. And then once the gasket touched the mating surface, I put a green Sharpie mark on it and then just spun the uh, oil filter another two-thirds of a turn because typically on most oil filters once the gasket makes contact you spin them like a half to two-thirds of a turn and then you stop and so that's what I did here and then there is a torque spec for it but I don't have an oil filter wrench uh, that can get on there that I can adapt down to a torque wrench so again I just uh, once the gasket met the mating surface put a green sharpie mark on it so I can watch where it was at and just turned it to two thirds of a turn after that. And th that snugged it up about as, uh, as snug as it was in order to, to take it off uh, to begin with. With that being said, I've got the surface, uh, mating surface cleaned up. I'm getting the pan prepped with all the hardware. So we're getting ready to re to install the bolts. And then uh, once that's done, I'll, I'll bring you back. Talk to you in a bit. Okay, 
Welcome back. Uh, so you can see we got our uh, replacement uh, mag high tech pan in at this point. We've got all our bolts torqued down. You can see we, as we've done with other things in this truck, as we torque it, we just took a sharpie and colored the head of the bolt in. So we know that we hit it and we didn't miss anything. We've gone over everything twice at this point. And as you can see, the pan's in, fits like a glove, no issues. We made sure that uh, our drain bolt was tight. Uh, and they do give you provisions in case you're curious. You see a little uh, plug here on the side in case you want to run an additional temperature sensor or something down here inside the fluid pan. They give you a little plug you can take out to do that. But as you can see, it's a pretty significant upgrade over the stock pan. And per the instructions, this particular pan gives you an extra quart and a half of fluid capacity that the factory doesn't and again there's two different pans that could have won on this transmission so if you see the 45 rfe that's the model number for this particular pan and that we had to go with this one because you'll notice again the passenger or driver's side exhaust cuts across that transmission and because of that that's why it had to have this dip in here uh, but it's in at this point all we've got left to do is fill it full of fluids start the truck Get it on the level surface, make sure we still got enough fluid in it. And again, uh, just based on what we drained out per the manual, it's probably gonna be anywhere between five to six, anywhere between five and eight quarts that we need to add, plus the additional quart and a half uh, from the additional depth of this pan. Well, other than that, that's it. I'm gonna cut it at this point and uh, catch you later, bye.